Hi, thank you for watching Digging to China. I'm Dong Xiong. If you have not done so already, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. The threat of Chinese invasion has loomed over Taiwan for more than 70 years, so long that many Taiwanese have grown to assume it will never happen. But Russia's invasion of Ukraine shattered that complacency. Taiwan suddenly has a live example of a large state invading a smaller neighbor while claiming that it is not a real country, the same claim China makes about Taiwan. The disturbing parallel has sparked a public debate over whether Taiwan is prepared to fend off an invasion. One recurring topic is porcupine method of defense that American and Taiwanese strategists have pushed Taiwan's armed forces to adopt. What does it mean to be a porcupine, and how might it help deter Chinese aggression? The Porcupine Doctrine was proposed in 2008 by U.S. Naval War College research professor William S. Murray. It is a strategy of asymmetric warfare focused on fortifying a weak state's defense to exploit enemy's weakness rather than taking on its strength. It is about building a defense that would ensure that Taiwan could be attacked and damaged but not defeated at least without unacceptably high costs and risks. Much like the animal, it tries to inflict so much pain on the larger rival that it stops the attacker. In 2017, Li Ximing, then chief of the Taiwanese military forces, adopted this strategy and referred to it as the overall defense concept, ODC. Taiwan began stockpiling on anti-air, anti-tank, anti-ship weapons rather than larger equipment, because the heavy expensive equipment such as fighter jets, helicopters, and tanks would easily be destroyed by an attacker. The porcupine approach consists of three defensive layers. The outer layer is about intelligence and reconnaissance to ensure defense forces are fully prepared. Behind this outer layer come plans for guerrilla warfare at sea with aerial support from sophisticated aircraft provided by the US. The innermost layer relies on the geography and the demography of the island. The ultimate objective is that to, of surviving and assimilating an aerial offensive well enough to organize a wall of fire that will prevent the Chinese People's Liberation Army from successfully invading. Ukraine war is a prime example of porcupine strategy. Since Russia began its invasion of Ukraine in February, the country has effectively used smaller weapons to fight back and humiliate Russia's larger army. Taiwan is closely watching how Ukraine has inflicted losses on Putin's forces to learn lessons on how to successfully defend against an invader with a larger army and weapons, aka PLA's attack on Taiwan. China's military, which is estimated at 2 million strong, far outnumbers Taiwan's 200,000 troops. Ukraine's effective use of smaller weapons is inspiring Taiwan, as they have been able to have an outsized impact on the more heavily armed Russian invaders. Throughout the war, Ukraine has exploited the US-provided handheld weapons such as the Javelin and the Stinger missiles, and attack clones to destroy Russian tanks and aircraft. As of August 8, more than 600 Russian tanks and aircraft have been destroyed since the beginning of the war, according to open source website Oryx. The smaller anti aircraft missiles have limitations in their reach, with the Javelin only having a 2.5 mile operating range. Ukraine has also recently had a string of success with US supplied high mass high mobility artillery rocket system, which has a much more extensive operating range of 53 miles. The US approved the first sale of high marks to Taiwan in 2020. 
Wall Street Journal reports that Taiwan has been considering increasing training in the use of portable missiles. Taiwan's President Tsai Ing-wen has even been pictured posing with the Taiwan-made shoulder-launched Kestrel anti-armor rocket. Taiwan is also looking to expand its drone arsenal. It's developing indigenous weapons like the Tung Yun. And the U.S. has also agreed to sell Taiwan its MQ-9 Reaper drones. The Taiwanese government has also pledged to spend an extra $8.7 billion on military equipment. No doubt, Beijing is keenly observing Ukraine war and also has drawn lessons from the conflict. Chinese Communist regime sees Taiwan as a breakaway province that it wishes to unify. If CCP wants to take Taiwan by force, it won't act until it's convinced it can win decisively and quickly. PLA is eyeing ways to take over Taiwan relatively fast by targeting the island's communications hub and the major political institutions. Some analysts believe. They say China would need more logistical support for any amphibious attack and a media message to back up any invasion. Chen Yifan is an assistant professor of diplomacy and international relations at the Tam Kong University in Taiwan. He said, most importantly, China needs to command the moral high ground through cognitive warfare and media discourse. Beijing is likely to recalibrate its expectations for the international response to any attack on Taiwan. China is very surprised about the Western response. China's Russian experts initially did not know there was going to be such strong international support to Ukraine. Compared to Russia, China depends more on other countries for economic stability. China is the world's biggest exporter of manufactured goods with 15% of the world total. Officials in Beijing are probably exploring harder now for a non-military solution. Let me again to conclude with Robert E. Lee's famous quote, It is well that war is so terrible, otherwise we should grow too fond of it. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment and subscribe to my channel. Just click the subscribe button right here. I'll see you again shortly. Until then, be well.